Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestria at War in which we're playing as the Griffonian Republic. Now it's been quite a while the time it's recording since I've played Equestria at War, but you know what, I always say that, but we're starting off with support the President Marshal. Generals run rampant in the countryside, and our own loyal commanders are powerless to stop them. It seems the Republican dream may soon come to an end if we are not careful in rooting out this cancer from our nation. Very good. The unruly military. Their unruly military has been a major problem in the Republic ever since the revolution. Sun Tail's troops have caused thousands of casualties in the bloodthirsty attempts to rid the countryside of bandits, and Rosewing has been accused of looting Republic towns and villages for supplies for his army. This behavior is unacceptable and must be stopped. However, there are two solutions to such a thing. Schnabel Sungleider, a political idealist and one of Kemmer Sky's closest advisors, says that the military should be rebuilt and the rebellious commander sacked so that the military will be at the same standard as the Griffonian army. Heinrich Kingfeather, a pragmatist, has dismissed this, claiming that the best course of action is the swiftest, merely placating the generals and going on with the Republican regime like clockwork. Reform the military, anger the warlords, placate the generals, and uh, would grab, grant large concessions to them. Okay, I'll be, honest, like, I'll be honest here. I have said this on historical, but even though I put it on historical, I don't know what's going to happen because I don't play Equestria War as much as I probably really should. But uh, we can reform the military, or we can do placate the generals. Um, let me see, let's take a look, I, I'll be honest, I'm not looking at this at all, off screen, so, I kind of want to do this one, maybe, foreign instructors, land doctrine, we get some more guys, some more generals, necessary reforms, who the population goes down, chain of command, all I know is that I'm probably, we're probably going to struggle here quite a bit, um, a new army, unruly army, oh, oh, we just remove it, with a loyal army down here, ooh, I kind of like that, play the generals, though, uh, Suntail, Unruly Army, that gets a little better, actually, with this one. Ooh, that's not bad. Loyal to the President. Ooh, baby boy. I don't know what's historical. We get more supremacy, which is kind of cool. Um, dealing with monarchists. The Republican War Propaganda. Amnesty for Raiders. Ooh, versus over Unruly Army and a Loyal Army. You get more political power, war support, and division recovery rate. Political power, recovery rate, war support. Basically the same thing. But a modern army. Ooh, we get more harmony. Ooh, well, mm, I'm sorry that I'm taking so long with this. Uh, I do like getting more army XP. Tour the countryside. Will not be fully pacified. Remove the warlords. Oh my gosh, I have to make such a decision right now? I don't know, the generals seem okay. I don't know. The worst is over. We should form the military. Anger the warlords. No, we're the warlords. I know there's a lot of things over here, and I'm, I'm a little worried about them, but ah, we'll just go this one. Screw it. Why not? Reform the military. Our military has held on to too much local power for too long. No more. An effort to reform and rehabilitate our military staff will hopefully stop these practices and prevent further escalation. And with the national spirits, Republican struggle, uh, language issue, we've got banditry, which is really bad. We've got unruly army, which is really bad, and risk of famine, which is... It is what it is. And if this is not historical, I apologize. I just... I, I don't know... What is at the time of this recording? So, um, I don't want to get more land army experience daily. Uh, when the when selected, the following idea will be added: building military academy, which is fine. A first step towards rehabilitation of our military staff is the reconstruction or construction of our own military academy. It required time, effort, and resources, but the prospects are promising. Cool. And of course, we have Alexander Cameron's guy. I just hope we can win. I just hope we can live. I, I kind of want to go with more non-aligned stuff. NRP. It's not the NPP. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I just want to be able to like defend because I know that. Uh, it's not gonna be great for us. It's really not. And these divisions are actually really bad. <laughs> like all these guys, these guys are six combo. This one is ten combo. There's only one of those after divisions. There's this one's twelve combo, which isn't too bad. They do have artillery, but I don't know, man. Also, if you want to read about this stuff, um, the history behind this, just go ahead. Down with the imperialists. Um, oh my goodness. And then we have this one, and that one. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Apologies for not reading for it, but it's just a bit too much for me to read in one sitting, so. I guess technically we could read it over time, but I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't feel like reading it at the time of this recording, but it is what it is. There you go. Quaint, but not a concern. Cool. Alright. Thank you. The history of the Republican struggle. All I know is that I want to do well. Right, the Emperor is dead. Bikolini becomes Prime Minister. That's pretty much what we all kind of assumed. And foreign instructors. Ooh. Ah. I kind of want to do this one so we get some more land doctrine. We're not only the ones in Grafoni who try to stand against monarchy and dictatorship. By inviting foreign military instructors and experts, we could learn much about how to rebuild a modern army. Followed up with what? Oh, Rosewing and Suntail Plata oppose Kemmer Sky. 
Reinhard's son, Teod, a charismatic and vicious veteran who has been training his forces in the countryside and engaging in banditry along with Klaus Rosewer Rosewing, one of Kamerska's major uh, officers in the revolution, who has been keen to usurp power ever since Kamerska's revolution failed, has begun a plot against our government. It is unknown what their plans are, but government agents think they are opposed to reforms in the military and are plotting a coup to prevent any check on their banditry and scandalous military practices. Reinhard Suntil has been alleged to be part of the Grafunia National Revolutionary Front, an underground nationalist group that opposes both democracy and monarchy, bringing a strong, powerful leader can guide the republic to glory, but if we want to encourage this behavior, maybe we should do nothing. So they're going to hold back their plans. Uh, yeah, let's do that one. Why not? Hmm. Anything here that gives us stuff immediately? I mean, that seems pretty good more stability. I don't want to lose political power, though. We remove from their post, but will not be fully pacified. Ensure uh, popular legitimacy. Many of the high commands see our attempt at reform as a form of betrayal against our oligarch. We must deal with these conspiracy theorists at once, and else they might spread distrust among our troops. Hmm. Point five two political power every single day, and I have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm for now. All right, and let's do the countryside next. Tour the countryside. The President Marshall is an excellent speaker. He will tour our nation and rekindle the Republican spirit of our people, especially the commoners in the North, who have been swayed by vicious generals who care little for the plight of the people. They must be reminded of the Republican cause. And then remove the warlords. Let's do it immediately. Oh, or not. Or, yeah, we probably will. The time's coming to deal with the most senior members of the old guard. These corrupt, disloyal griffins will be removed from the post so that they can no longer threaten the Republican clawberry. Civil War and Longsword, very nice. Also, we only have three research slots. It is what it is, but oh well. Mm, new Republican officers. The first graduates of our academy are now ready to take up their posts. No longer will the old guard dominate our staff. A new generation will take up the torch. Very nice. Very good. I love how fast the question of war moves. I mean, look at the speed of this mod. The devs, they know what they're doing. Oh, whole speech. Eulogy for Grover the Fifth. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, what is that one? Grover V, Emperor of all Griffins, is dead. We should exploit this by reminding the people of his failures and auto autocratic rule. Uh, the fascists in the South. Uh, Staatsminister Giulio Bicolini is taking control of wing body, proving that monarchy will concede to fascism when it is most threatened. Camera Sky certainly has a lot to say about this new fascist monarchy in the South. Cool. And then let's go and do... I don't want to hurt population yet. Army XP again, though, seems pretty good to do. Necessary army reforms. Our soldiers are there to protect us all. And as such, we must ensure only those who are up for the task are allowed to join the ranks. A higher level of military standards will ensure that our ranks are filled with able-bodied griffins, even if there are a lot less of them overall. That's okay. We lose some pop recruitable population factor, but we do get more max planning, which is nice. And more army experience gain, which is not too bad. So, guys, can we build, please? Oh, we don't have a general here. Um, who can choose? I want someone who's really good on defense. That's all I care about. Okay, everyone has a really garbage defensive stat. So, Max White Feather, you got the job. Congratulations. We get points with three command power every day. That 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 sucks. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. A new chain of command. With new generals in the same military bureaucracy and chain of command, we run the risk of turning over new blood, or our new blood, in a corrupt generals yet again. This must not be allowed to happen, and a reform is desperately needed. So I went with this side just because it does give you a little more command, maximum command power increase. So if you have 40 combo with divisions, you can probably go and use that too if you want to do like force attack and stuff. So, And more division organization signs, but we'll see. Oh, I'm probably going to screw this one up. Oh, Sun Cl Strikers Clan. Nice. Oh, deranged. We love deranged ones. Combat shovels. Huh. Alright. New daring Dubuck. Very nice. All right, necessary army reforms and a new chain of command, which we're going to go back over here and do this. Yes. Um, well, Grover V, the Emperor of all Griffonians, King of the Hearts Land, Duke of Griffenheim, the Griffin that followed the revolution of 978, is dead at the young year of 47. I wish I could shed a tear, my brothers, but the truth is Grover V has done nothing for the Hatlands but drive it into doom and despair. I'm sure many of you would agree that Grover V has done almost nothing right. He has let Catherine burn, strengthen the powers of Akam, centralized religious control over the capital and any any hope of a secular Griffonia. He has spit in the face of every constitutional reform that he has been offered, even the threat of a second Griffonian revolution on his doorstep. He has let loose Eastern Marches to continue the genocidal crusades on the ponies, and lost the Duchy of Griffinstone to a weak Regency Council under a Griffin so old he is called Grandpa. He didn't even die right. He left the Empire in such a chaos. I'm almost inclined to cheer at his death. His son is not even six years old, and it's likely that a Regency Council of nobles, oligarchic and corrupt, will ruin the stead. As much as it pains to say it, this is a victory for the Republic. Godly justice has been enacted upon the Middle-Aged Emperor, and as he dies and the Child Emperor takes over the Republicans, the Bay and Bray Patriots, from all over the heartlands, will rebel against their feudal lords from Bloom and Ungar 
River, the Little Camera Sky to, to the Carton in Romau. The people of Griffonia are mobilizing. I am sure that when the struggle ends and we are writing the history books, our people will write the death of the Emperor and how it changed Griffonia forever. Six except for Tyrannus. I'll do this in a little bit too. I want to read another focus for yourself. So. Uh, a new army. We have succeeded in our great campaign of reform. We stand triumphant over our domestic crisis. There's still many problems and things to deal with on the horizon, but the Republic will prevail. Always. Maybe next time I think I'll do this one. Just because it gives us more... I don't know. Something different. Some coins in the right place. That seems kind of corrupt, honestly. That seems a little corrupt. Mm. Now, new army. But loyalty, to, loyalty to the revolution. Oh, GRS imperative. Whatever new is destroyer models has yet yesterday gone missing after failing to report in while on maneuvers. After realizing the destroyer was lost, our naval group was scrambled to search for the vessel. After a full 12 hours of fruitless searching, the destroyer appeared again, gliding out of thick fog. It was first thought that the report was a fake, as the position of the destroyer was well out of the area that it could possibly travel in that time, yet there was there it was. Even stranger, it was discovered afterwards that the destroyer was completely unmanned on arrival. The entire crew has been reported missing, and the ship has been quarantined for further scientific and magical analysis. It's a ghost ship, you say? I like this one a lot, because uh, that could really help us out. Soldiers desert to Rosewing and Suntail's divisions. Soldiers are refusing orders from Marshal Kemmer Sky, and even began to desert two divisions led by Warlords Klaus Rosewing and Reinhard Suntail, or Reinhard and Rosewine. Many are drawn in by promises of looting and banditry and are fed up with the consistent low pay from the chaotic government in Cloudberry. This could easily prove problematic for a government, as if Rosewing and Suntail ever revolt against the government. They all have the power of many once loyal troops on their side. They're just begging for more pay. Let them rebel all they want. Center loyal troops... Send interloper troops to take care of these traitors. Hmm. Skyfall is a place of contradictions, indeed. Well, there are a few vices that do not flow through its streets, and yet there you can find the most exemplary of Griffins in the competitive spirit and ambitious dreaming. They trade with tyrants and heroes alike, and every time you feel as though you should condemn them, they surprise you, indeed. There are also few who are not familiar, at least in passing, with his old chancellor, Giselaine Guichard, and there are some even fewer who could speak kindly of such a griff without making it a liar of themselves. He has sat comfortably in Skyfall for many years, profiteering from the chaotic city of Griffonia, and yet, Skyfall amazes again. As his very niece replaces him, there are many who would claim that Skyfall has been twisted into a simple oligarchy, yet I ask those people to study the achievements of Chancellor Guildwing and be amazed. Or Gilded Wing. Many would have claimed that to dislodge Gislam, armed revolution should have been necessary, and yet Genevieve Gilded Wing achieved it bloodlessly and painlessly. The oligarchs who once held sway there lie broken around her, and the people stand ele elevated. The Republican dream still burns bright in their hearts, land, and yet Skyfalls always did the thing in its, own, in its own way. The torch of republicanism expands further, and the fascists in the South. Cameron Sky's speech on Bicolini. In these recent days, in Fair Carthen, on Wing Body Shores, democracy suffered a vicious blow to the claws of tyranny. As they could not achieve power through popular mandate, they chose to instead march on Carthen and seize it by force. There are voices, both here and abroad, who have claimed that in the general Bicolini, we have a potential ally of the Republican cause, but I must call such notions for what they are misguided at best, dishonest at worst. When the Republic rose to fight, it did so to take a stand against tyranny and to stand for those liberties we hold as sacred and unquestioned. It sought to cast down tyrannical kings and let all drink from the goblet of freedom. This wing body and movement stands in stark contrast to us, being more concerned with parading their king around as a figurehead, while their military crush all who would dare speak out against them. My fellow Republicans, there can be no doubt if 30 years ago this Griffin had held power he did. He would not have been our ally or comrade. Rather, he would have been the most vicious of the thugs rallied by the counter-revolutionaries to bring down the revolution, and even as he later usurped the imperial throne, claim to be its protector. Whatever outward similarities some griffs find between the revolution and this duce, we are sure to be our two very cores, different, indeed contradictory, in goals and values both. In him we see not another revolutionary, but the last vicious death throes of the old order. Whether we face him in battle remains for the face to spill up, but there can never, never, never be any cooperation with this tyrant. A tyrant and an autocrat. Very good. Desertions. Well, that sucks. Are we really going to civil war? Man, that's going to suck. I should have done the other one then. Mm, it is a 1,007, everyone, and I'm sure people are going to remind me. Do your race text. And there's only one race here in our country. It's very homogeneous. Uh, loyalty to the revolution. I like that one. I don't know. I, I kind of want to do loyalty to the present, though. The Generalissimo has led us valiantly thus far and away from the yoke of the Empire. All eyes and hearts turn towards our proud... Whoa, President Marshall. I like that political power. I want to get more down line, I'll be honest here. And this one's the fire of the revolution burns inside every griffin, and her dream of a republic fills her minds. A single griffin's mind can change, but her dream will not for the republic. I want to do that one, but I want to get more non-aligned. I really do. So, and I like political power, because we only get 0.57 right now, so we'll see what happens. I think I'm going to do loyalty to the president, though. Loyalty to Alexander 
my dude. Or our dude, whatever it is. We can actually... Oh, we can actually do stuff here. Look at that. Finally, we can do stuff here. Finally, 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 finally. With recon. Ooh. Oh, motorized recon. Um. Hmm. What are you even producing? We need guns. Wow. That's not bad. If we were to do this, though... We would not have enough. So, let's go reset. How much support equipment do we have right now? We have a little bit. Because we need engineers. Oh, we don't even have them researched. Oh, no. Oh, that looks so not good. Um, oh, man. That's not good. Go and do that. Republican Militia. Reserve Divisions. Ugh, 10 combat with. At the very least, can we at least make all these guys 10 combat with? Oh, we, I know we don't have guns. Oh, you guys are okay. You guys are the... You guys are... Uh, 6 combat with. Jesus Christ. So the Reserve Divisions are where we're going to put them. I'm sorry, man. I just can't do this one. But I will use this one for uh, uh, Occupied Territories eventually. So, And after this, we can do one of these. What do we have over here? Can we do... Recover from Warlordism. I like that idea. There's nothing else here, except, of course, we have all this stuff, too, which is nice and great. Don't get me wrong. I like it. But, uh, Rosewing. Marshall. Oh, we can go straight down for, uh, Superior Firepower, which we need to do as well, but... Um, exactly 98 is exa added to the National Stockpile. All right. Um, hmm. Rocket Artillery. More. Oh, Artillery Attack. I like that. And another research site would be really good. Repair our Air Force. Well, let's keep going down this way and see what happens. Now, we could do Enforced Martial Law. And I guess we could do this one as well. But if I'm going to go left path, I'll go here. If we're going down that path, I'll go down here. So I'll just go down the civilian government. Let's get more political power. Appoint civilian ministers. That'd be kind of nice. A civilian government. It's only a two-week focus. Our dream of a republic must not be swept under the table. A legitimate working government is the only way. A government of the people. Um, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. I think this happens every campaign. So, a toast to family and unity. I could be very wrong, but hey, it is what it is. Like I said earlier, I really need to play more Equestria at War, because it's an extremely well-developed mod. Like, it's ridiculously well-made. So, like, it's almost too well-made. Almost. <sighs> civilian government. Um, appoint civilian ministers. We are a state with an army, not the other way around. As such, our officials will be selected from the civilians. Military staff belongs in the military, not the government. Oh, so we can get... Okay, so we wait to do this one. Cabinet reshuffle, political advisor cost goes down. So I, I do want to get some political power. Like, I'm a guy that loves PP. Okay. Uh, maybe not like that, but I think you kind of get my idea. Uh, so, uh, consumer goods will be good. Ah, 15%. That's a lot of fat PP. I did say I want to wait, so. I don't want to hit that. Inoffensive centrist, of course. So, Tobias Sivenhoff. Cheer on Stormfeather. I think I want to go with this guy, and I, we're going to max our PP out as much as possible. The Pulsin Affair. Scandal shook the nation today as the news began to report rumors of the left NPP or NRP city council group of Cloud Bear, Jakob Pulsin, was involved in an affair with a prostitute. <gasps> if this wasn't embarrassing enough, the prostitute in question, whose identity has remained anonymous throughout the scandal, was reportedly a known spy for the United Socialist Revolutionary Front of Scandinavia, and has since fled the nation with vital state secrets. <gasps> Fears over collusion between Polson and the Scandinavian government have led to widespread panic in the government, and Heinrich Kingfeather, leader of the right NRP, has already called for the city council group to resign, setting unclear loyalties towards the great Republican dream. While left NRP leader Rickard Astler has largely kept silent on the matter, Socialist Aligned General Mo Sparrowsbane has released a statement, and although he completely ignores the matter of Scandinavian secrets, declares that the act of prostitution is immoral and incompatible with the values of socialism and liberation. Interestingly, uh, despite antagonism from all sides of the political sphere, Jakob Polson has denied any claim of ill conduct, but has resigned anyways. Right NRP leaders have been galvanized by Polson's unloyal and vile conduct, claiming that a full state investigation must be made into the actions of the party, and whether it's truly compromised by the Scandinavian interests. How embarrassing! Prostitution, you say, though? Hmm. It could be some good money in that. Anyways, um, let's see. Yeah, I want to go with 15%. Give us that fat pee, pee So now we're getting better. Ooh, I don't know which way we want to go. NRP center wing becomes ruling party, or maintain the Kingfeather cabinet. Kingfeather. Ooh, I like the captain of industry. Oh, we get Silent Workbird, sil Political Power Gain, plus 15%. Oh, but you get more fuel solid construction. That seems a little bit more focused on war production. Teach a Hetzland a dialect. 
I like that, but I don't like losing stability for a lot more political power. I like this one, liberty or death, to get more population, though. Let's see, War Propaganda Commando. Expand the Anarchy Welfare Program. All right. Or how about this side? Uh, this one, I feel, I like this one a bit more because we go do go non-aligned. You get more political power. You can, at least. Civilian stuff. The language, ooh, the language issue. What do we have for here? Ooh, Kevin, reshuffle. Because this one's really good to have for now because we'll get more PP anyway, so. Um, language issue, huh? Risk of famine. Oh, so we get slightly more political power. Division organization. Recruitable population factor. And stu Ooh, baby. Do we have this over here, too? Oh, we do have it over there, too, which is, which is nice. PP. Oh, you lose some stuff. Defense of foreign policy, though. I mean, but that, that loss of PP will be recouped later on. Division defense of core territory. I like that a lot, too. And the NRP welfare program. Gains national spirit. Government spending slash. Better consumer goods. Bring natives into the party. Oh, I think I've got to go to the right side. If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. I'm sure I'm going to read this some other day, but, like, for now, I want to go to the right side just because you get more non-aligned. And that's kind of the way I want to go, even though that population looks really good. Arr, arr. <sighs> Maintain the king for the cabinet. Vice President Heinrich Kingfeather has done a fine job so far, while other ministers can be reshuffled. It's imperative that we keep Kingfeather in his position. Realism and pragmatism will dictate our policies and decisions, and our dream of a Griffonian Republic is second in line only. Cool. And what's next? And a proper police force gradually removes the banditry national spirit. I like that. Um, I think we can wait to do this one. I want to get rid of the banditry. That just is so bad. The second Korean revolution, blood in the water. Reports have come in of a strange sighting from Lake Greston, near the city of Squark. Apparently, a group of local youths were having a pe party at the edge of the lake when they discovered the body of a diamond dog, mauled and torn by claws, daggers, and bullets. Witnesses identified him as Cadworth, a diamond dog street musician and performance artist part of a reclusive community of northern diamond dogs. When they reported it to the Squark police, a citywide investigation was launched, eventually finding the culprits, a gang of griffins associated with a society against monarchist tyranny, who had murdered him due to crypto-monarchism and a desire to restore Grover VI to the throne of Cloudberry. The society's griffins found themselves in prison with lawyer and politician Heinrich Kingfeather demanding they be given harsh sentences for the lynching of their dog. Eric Krieger, an industrialist and militarist administer how the military's minister, however, believed that the attacks were somewhat justified, as a scourge of monarchism must not be allowed in our just society. The killing of Cadworth has sparked mass media attention, and while most politicians have officially condemned it, the killing still has damaged anti-monarchist elements in the nation. The streets simply just are not safe anymore. Oh, I want to get rid of that, but I want to get rid of the banditry stuff. For too long, ban bands of bandits and thieves have dominated and terrorized the countryside no more. A new and proper police force shall make short work of all these criminals. The 30th anniversary of the Republican Revolution. It's been 30 years since Kemmer Sky's loyal officers and the National Republican Party uh, launched a revolution that would change the history of all Griffonia. And so it has been 30 years since the last time we sat in Griffenheim, hailed as liberators and heroes. There were no jovial celebrations or delightful festivals in, the, in this anniversary as there were when the Republicans first took Cloudberry instead. Protesters clogged every street and squawked the city of Cloudberry and Wingshagen. Or... Yeah, wing hanging. Militars clamored for a return to Griffenheim and the destruction of the Imperialists once and for all. When politicians held speeches and events celebrating the revolution, each and every one was stormed by a mob of angry Griffins, demanding a return to Griffenheim and the end of the King Feather policy of pragmatism and pacifism. Schnabel Sunglider was perhaps the only politician greeted favorably by the protesting forces with his speeches on finally returning to the Imperial City and driving out the forces of Grover VI, attracting thousands of spectators. The intensity and severity of these protests, along with the apathy towards King Feather policy and Cameron Sky's government, are quite worrying for our government. It is clear that the Republicans of Cloudberry only want one thing, liberation. We'll come back, we swear, and I'm not touching that thing just yet, but we're going to do a proper police force. Yes. Secure the countryside. Ooh, speeds up the removal. I want to go down here fast as possible. Oh, we got to go fast. We got to go fast. And this one... Oh, we could become more harmony. Okay. Secure the countryside. Though it might seem extreme to some, the police alone may not be able to clamp down on the issues of banditry in time. Reserves of the army shall be redirected to aid them in this cause to pacify and secure the land. And now we got enough here to do this again. I'm going to go pee pee all the way. Hmm. I like that one too. A civil servant's not bad. Um. Storm Feather. Is this good? I don't know. His loyalty's lying question. Who, who is he really supporting? The Republic or the roving warlord Reinhard Suntail? I don't know. This seems like it's a bad idea. I'm probably. I'm going to regret doing this one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to regret doing that one. So. And then. Oh, we can't even. We can't even change this, so. Successful revolution. I like the Republic. I've done them four times, I think, already. Huh. <laughs> Well, at least these guys broke away from these guys, which is really nice to see, and that gives us some time, just in case things go poorly for us. We still have one. Still have one. How, how many guns are we lacking? 6,000. Jesus Christ, that's not good. Oh, God. Oh, no. A proper police force is nice. Get rid of those goddamn bandits. Please, please, please. 
the anthem debate. As Parliament opens again, one pressing issue on the table is that of our national anthem, or more precisely, the lack of one. As Griffin's debated, uh, three to us has become frontrunners. The tricolor as a party anthem of the NRP, and many claim that integrating it as our national anthem would increase party unity and show the people of Griffonia that we're so devoted to Republican causes. However, using the anthem of the group for the national anthem could be viewed as an attack by many small parties that begin to form in Parliament. Even without the political, its political undertones, the tricolor is still a divisive anthem. Its chorus, though cowards flinch and Snader's trier will keep the tricolor flying hair, has been viewed as offensive and crass. However, it still stands as one of the most popular unofficial anthems and is a staunch Republican tune. The next song in consideration is Arisen from Ruins, a tune popularized during the Republican Revolution itself that speaks of united free Griffonia. While the tricolor speaks of Republicanism in general, Arisen from Ruins speaks of our final goal. Let us serve your good will truly, Griffonia, our fatherland. And the last song for consideration is Unity and Justice and Freedom. And third stands of the popular Griffonian song Das Lied de Griffonien, also called Song of the Griffins. Our democratic values and our views for United Griffonia are echoed in every word of this third stanza. In addition, picking a song that has already been popularized during the people of Griffonia may prove a boon to legitimacy as the rightful successor to the dying empire. And in the end, however, what song should be chosen? Everything is harmony, huh? Um, obviously... This is taken from, like, was it, the 1848 German Revolutions? Because unity and justice and freedom. The only reason I remember that is because I was doing G TNO, Aberspeer, and, yeah, that, that's, yeah, Das Lied uh, Deutsch or something like that. I don't remember what it is exactly, but this is definitely, this is definitely Germany. Um, I don't know, War Sport? Hmm. I like stability, though. Unity and justice and freedom. German Republicanism, huh? Yeah, this one, I like this one a lot. And it makes more sense. We are so high anyways. Oh, we'll do a tricolor. Why not? Why not? Focus on civilian industry. I like that. I want to remove the language issue as well. Restore constitution would not be bad. Parliamentary elections. I don't know about that. Mm, not a lot like that. I'll get more pee, pee I like more consumer goods too, though. Stability would be pretty good, though. Mm, mandatory bilingualism for state officials or feed the hungry. Eh, just in case. Feed the hungry. We cannot claim to be a government of the people if the people are starving in the streets. The present crisis must be dealt with swiftly. Food for the people. Even though we're going to be ending the welfare program soon, but don't 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 ask about that. The bandit problem. Ever since the establishment of the Griffonian Republic, bandits, marauders, and other criminals were a true problem for everyone not living in the middle of a big city. Many years have passed since, but they have stayed a long thorn and against our government. But that has recently changed, as now we put more of our attention on bringing them down, and we can at least guarantee that major roads and communication paths are safe from them. Yet we cannot stop now. There are still smaller and bigger villages and cities being terrorized by them, and many of smaller roads are still infested with that pest. Intensify our efforts. Make sure that every road and every city in the Griffonian Republic is safe. Nice. Yes. God, I want to go here. We need more world tension. Why is it only that, that little? Actually, can you grab? Oh, that's still 150, so. Alright, so that is the case. God, I don't want to go there so badly. We need to choose someone else here. Um, Inoffensive dude. That's not bad. Civil servant. I like that, but we need more war support. We will need a lot of war support. Infrastructure. We do get political power with Heinrich Kingfeather, too. So if you don't worry about him, holy crap, that's a lot of text. Yeah, we get political power. And civilian factory construction speed. So we currently get 1.45. Now we jump up to 1.77. We're gonna we're gonna be making out with PP. No, maybe not making out with PP. We'll get a lot of PP. Um, hold a speech to the Quillian Republic. Theodore Verani has launched a revolution in Aquilia, declaring a republic once more. We should praise this new movement and declare our solidarity with the international republican parties. My fellow citizens, I have told you a thousand times before that someday the light of the republic will return to Alcrifonia, and I have been proven right. The second Aquilian revolution, aided by the old marshal Theodore Verani, has begun, and the old monarchy has been shattered once more. The republican revolutions of seven... 978 and 980 have returned my country grist, and this is only the beginning of a great struggle. A struggle that will end with the tricolor over Griffenheim once more. As I give this speech, I have authorized the Republican government to officially recognize the government of Theodore Verani as the legitimate government of Aquilia. And I hope that in the coming months, our governments can stand together, claw and claw, against the monarchist menaces that have seized the Griffonian continent from the people. This is the beginning of a new dawn for Griffonia in the world. Let us not end our dream of democracy when the world is so close to seeing it through. Congratulations, Verani. And I apologize for speaking really fast. I can tell that this copy is really affecting me right now. Oh, baby. It's really strong. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? We might want to do this one too. <laughs> Even though stability, let's grab a little more stability first. And then we'll do this one to get some more stuff here too. Uh, you all, mm, we do have quite a bit of artillery. We could probably throw the artillery on these guys, so no matter what, even though they're this division and we upgrade them later on, they're still going to have artillery anyways. But that might be a waste of PP. We might just want to throw them on, on here too. Uh, how much is this going to cost? Too much. Oh, actually, 210 is not bad. That's actually not too bad. 
What if we did this one too then? That's really bad. Let's do that one then. Cool. We'll do both. Because why not? One of you guys need to train more. Alright. They refuse to yield. So be it. Say that he banished you with. Did it mark's first day when they'll see in a republic nor a road is taken over by bandits? Uh, our campaign to eradicate them was hard and bloody, but has paid off in the end, and most of our citizens can now sleep soundly as we made sure that remnants of the once great gangs, bands, and groups have been driven into hiding. But we cannot make a mistake here, even though they hide in forests and in less scrupulous parts of our cities. They can still return to their old ways if we don't push them even harder. Oh, we love pushing them. Make sure that our army scouts every single forest or hiding hole in the countryside. Yes, yes! Sorry, I'm just... That coffee, that was... What, I don't know what I made, but that was really strong stuff. I love it! Hmm... Are we not this? That is what we are, so. We will get some intelligence agency eventually. Promises of peace. Dude, we get so much PP now. 1.8. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Oh, it's already this year. 1,008. Happy 1,000, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Construction? Yes, please. Feed the hungry. And restore the Constitution. I don't know about the Constitution. I prefer mandate. A mandatory bilingualism for the state officials. Most state officials don't even know clouds burying and can't interact with more than half the country. To rectify this, we must acquire a mandatory bilingualism for the state officials, senators, and civil servants. No exceptions. And focus on civilian industry. The government must allocate resources to the civilian sphere and build up our industry and infrastructure instead of building up our military for war. Criminal spurge. We just got reports in. Our armed forces have managed to find and swiftly deliver justice to the last band of priesthood gang. It's quite an interesting end to our campaign, seeing how priesthood was the first criminal organization in the Republic. With their end, an ancient history of our country ends, where there was once lawlessness. Now there's order, where there was once every well-meaning griff was afraid to go out at night. Now you can just meet all kinds of griffs, merry griffs, celebrating whatever occasion. Or just having fun together, where once most of the roads had to be traveled together with armed escort, now you can see lone mothers with children going on about their day, more than sure about their safety. So we get 2% better consumer goods, 5% more stability, more resource efficiency gain, more infrastructure construction speed. This will make the lives of every one of our citizens better. Better like butter. Hmm. Well, that's kind of disappointing that there's nothing here, nothing unique about these guys, but that's alright. Ah, yes, early mobilization. Um, actually, this... Going down here, this hurts your ability to make refineries and infrastructure. Not by much, but a little bit. But you do get more oil or fuel per get oil gain. 5% more consumer goods. It does hurt your industry research speed as well as electronics, but that's okay with us because we want more cities to work with right now. 3 is definitely better than 1. Definitely, 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 definitely better than 1. 1. 1.86. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we're going to focus on this stuff next. And then we might go here and... Oh, welfare program. Oh, radio. Yes. Yes. I would like another research slot, but that'll come eventually. Um, keep going this one. We gotta get at least that stuff started, right? Uh, you guys, are you sure you don't want to train anymore, guys? Are you sure? Because, no, we're out of this up, we're out of this up. Kemmer Sky's memoirs published. Today, an official announcement has been made by President Marshall Kemmer Sky from his presidential palace in Cloudberry. Kemmer Sky announced that his memoir, The Triumph of Liberty, has been officially published and released across the bookstores across the Republic and in Griffonia as a whole, as long as monarchist bookstores would actually have any interest in stopping, stocking the book. The autobiography follows the President Marshall of the Republic from his early life, where he was born the third son of Baron Aldous Kemmer Sky to his experiences in the military and with his brothers, and then to the Republican Revolution and, of course, to the current day. Now, the book has been praised by the critics across the Republic, with the leader of the center, NRP, Schnabel Schlungleiter, declaring it a must-read and a brilliant look into the leader of the greatest state in Griffonian history, and author Cornelius Vink, declaring it almost as good as my work. Cameron Sky's work was generally praised for its style, prose, and core messaging, with many calling Cameron Sky a good writer as he is an orator. A be beautiful story of hope and loss. Nice. Uh, and then restoring the Constitution. We suspended the Constitution in our darkest hour, but now it's time to bring it back. The people will see the legitimacy of our government. The Republic will never fall. We'll make sure of that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Good stuff. Do we have any ships? No, we don't. What are we even making? We're trying to make some early cruisers, which are not very good, but we don't have that much time for researching other ships right now. You guys are done. Yeah, you guys are actually pretty much done. We definitely, as you can tell, need more planes. Hmm, not great. What do we have here? Promises of peace. That's okay. Borrow from Flowina. Hmm. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Good, good, good. Now, we, I'm trying to rush down the side, as you can tell, but... Trade with Skyfall. Um, yeah, we'll see. Skyfall, despite its size, is an economic juggernaut. Through some investments and establishing lobbying operations there, we can reap many economic benefits, but it won't come cheap, and the Skyfall may not welcome our attempts at increasing trade relations with them. If they accept. Hmm. Hmm.
They're not that far away. Can we increase relations? We can try it. They might accept if we increase it more. We'll see what happens. Defensive foreign policy. Defense is the best form of offense. To safeguard the dream, we must not rush foolhardy into Griffenheim. Rather, we must fortify the border and create international alliances to stand up to the monarchist menace. They accept. News from the great city of Skyfall. And our offer has been accepted. New wealth should begin to flow into our nation soon. Stonks. Yes. Yes. 5%. Not bad. That's pretty good. Please. Can I just train? Please? No? Okay. Not bad so far. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Then again, everything's going to go to crap probably later on. As it usually does, doesn't it? Look at that. 1.68. Oh, it actually went down. Oh, because we're doing this one. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, 2.08 every day. Holy crap. That's really nice, actually. That's really, really nice. And this one next. And the NRP Welfare Program. The government has been spending too much on both the military and welfare. It is frivolous that the government would drive themselves into debt to pursue another failed invasion of Griffenheim. And eventually we will do the parliamentary elections. Necessary measure. Oh. A new dawn. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's not bad. Superior firepower. Nice. Uh, since we don't have a blueprint yet. Oh, that's 500 freaking days. Wow. That's a lot of days. Wow. Stop trading? Yeah, no thanks. Uh, we're, uh, I like what we're doing. I could get, we could get a loan, but that might hurt us on the other side if we don't do that. So, yeah. We're going to do this one next. Because we still have stuff on the right side here I want to do and we need to get to. So, we'll see what happens. Invention of Beacle. Uh, from a rundown suburb of our fair capital comes an invention which will change the lives of many. A simple school griffin has come up with a completely new way of writing down Hefslander using new methods of printing, and assume that cloud Baron will soon follow as a compatible language. The method involves printing repeating patterns of dots onto paper, yet these dots do not use any ink at all. The new printer pushes small bumps into the paper. What use is this? Well, up until now, the blind have been unable to read yet. The inventor, who is blind himself, professes this new technique while allows blind griffins to read. This invention is taking the education establishment by storm in two different schools for the blind that just open in our capital. The blind can read? Good for them hey that sounds really good that sounds really really good for these guys oh anything else here no anything over here high command well, i want as much defense as possible man we're going to need some big thick defensive divisions uh we can do that we're gonna wait oh nice socialist union cool and what's down here the griffin uh, tutelage more political power the task ahead huh non-aligned i guess we'll probably go down that way then Parliamentary elections? It is time to hold regional elections to have the people decide who should lead the administrative business in their states. The people should govern themselves again, and the suspension of 986 shall be rectified and reopen Parliament. Well, I guess we have to do this one first. Bring natives into the party. The NRP has been traditionally hostile towards natives and their organizations due to their inherent monarchist bias. This position is unfounded in reality, and it is necessary that we encourage natives to rejoin the party. The Hetzland of majority must end. Okay. Sounds good to us. Seven's not bad, seven's not bad. And we currently get 2.1 every single day. That's not bad. That's a lot of peepee we like. Oh, do we? Hello, we made a new division. 17 combo with, but that is... Okay, oh. And these guys are killing each other. Uh, please don't lose. Please, 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 please. Republic of Tarn declares independence. We'll get luck with that. Look at some more daily army XP. That'll be really good for us, because we need to edit our divisions like crazy. And we're going to need more manpower. How do we get more manpower? Hmm. So after that one, I want to start doing another one. Oh, finishing touches. Ooh, we've become a modern society. Ooh, that's really cool. Uh, that would be good for construction speed. Oh. 35, oh, 35 days? I'll get more Oh, there's so much I want to do here. Recover from warlordism. I'd like... Oh, my gosh. There's so much I want to do. Uh, let's do finishing touches first because we get some military factories that we desperately need. Our industry is still behind that of other nations. This cannot be if we wish to realize our ambitions. We must take final measures to reform into a truly modern and industrial society on par with the rest of the Griffonian continent. Um, and now we can actually come over here too. Let's go with industry concern because I usually do that one because I like that one. Mechanization. Oh, we get 2% better. Oh my goodness. Moderate poverty with low poverty. Oh, that's good too. There's so much I want to do. <laughs> oh, the devs. Oh my goodness. I don't know. Just, oh my gosh. The Cloud Bear Education Initiative. The CEI, also known as the Cloud Bear Education Initiative, is a new program perfected by the President Marshall and his closest advisors. The program will eradicate illiteracy in the north of the Republic, especially where native population is a large majority. So, we're going to do this one. And then I'm going to do two up here so we can get some bonuses for superior firepower soon. So, at least we can be working on that as time goes on because, well, our industry and researching things, it's definitely going. Like, I'll be honest, it's going. Oh, wait, what? What did I click on? 
Did I click on this one? No, that's a bit too ahead of time for me, guys. There you go. Oh my gosh, that's so long. Jesus Christ, that's so long. So now we'll recover from warlordism. In order to achieve our military goals, we must engage in intensive doctrine and technological reform, along with militarization and mobilization not seen since the days of the First Revolution. If we're to return to Griffenheim, we must rebuild our military industry once again. And there goes our manpower. Big sadness hours, man. Big sadness hours. Um, there you go. Um, oh, we made another one too. Great. Cool. And you guys are just a, the 10 combo with... Oh, that is painful, man. That is painful. Small infantry equipment, that's fine. We will need to raise a conscription level soon, the wisdom of Marshal Kemersky. Why waste the lives of our citizens and commanders' ability to think independently if we could just throw hundreds, if not thousands, of artillery shells at the enemy? Sounds like a reasonable take. Yakistan was eliminated, nice. Griffinheim, or the Griffonian Empire, is still doing okay. It's kind of a big boy. We still get 2.13 every single day, though. But look at that. We are a modern society. We have modest illiteracy, and now we have a substantial base. Poverty is really bad, which we're going to work on next. So after warlordism, we'll do the Sky and expand northern schools. Not bad. Develop science base. We should do get political power from that, but that really hurts the research speed. Really hurts it. Oh, there's so much here I want to do. So much. And my god, the that's running so fast still. I love it. I love it. Banking reform. Oh. Oh, don't tease me with a good time. Reforms. Oh, 3%. percent i got to do this one. We are to embark on a great bank reform in order to fix much of our collapsed financial systems. This will help ensure that our nation and people can prosper. Comet cited. The appearance of a bright comet in the night sky has caused a panic among the griffins of our nation. Some of them believe that the comet is an omen from the end of the world or that the penalty for all of our deeds will come soon. May the gods be merciful. Boreas, protect us. Make a sacrifice to Ma. Why do I live so many... Why do I have so many stupid griffins in my nation? Because we love them. Military training... I mean, honestly, eh, we're kind of okay already, sort of, so. I'd love to go to war, kind of, but we have to be at war for that one, which is fine. Um, let's go with aircraft, that's fine. And Boreas, protect us! Protect us, Boreas! Protect us! How are we looking here? Hey, oh, well, look at this! We're actually positive on those. all Wow! Wow! Um, let's go hurt ourselves now. 509, that's fine. That's okay with me. Oh, uh, we need engineers. The Society for the Wise Lady and the Republic. Calling upon their ancient heritage as allies and subjects of the Kingdom of Vedina. Hundreds of religious citizens and Beak Spire or Bleak Spire proclaim the Society for the Wise Lady and the Republic, calling back to a shared heritage with the Kingdom of Vedina and renewed religious purpose in the Republic. Although the organization is extremely fringe, even among the crazies of Bleak Spire, many believe it is being used as an outlet for secret monarchist organizations. The Society has been officially endorsed by Gustav IV, Wingstrom, and the Vedinian government. While Cameron Sky is already officially banned from the running in Peak Spears, Bleak Spears elections, even if they were only to gather 2% of the vote at their peak. Many believe the movement as a whole is a response to hostile anti akhenat policies by the Republic, whose citizens have been largely ostracized from a religious life, and their fierce condemnations against the Republic against Archon Eros the Seventh and Archon Eros the Twelfth. Get out of here, Vedinians! Naval raid from Hawkland. Our shores have been hit by a raiding party from Hawkland. Our forces were unable to stop their air-supported naval group sent by Meyer. Coastal towns have been damaged and looted. There are several death reports reported and many more wounded. In light of this defeat, there have been many calls to restructure and bolster our naval capabilities. Only superior strength will keep the Hawklandish pirates at bay. Darn you, Maya. Oh, how do we get rid of that, then? How do we... Oh, is there something over here we can do, maybe? But we gotta do banking reform next. Followed up with... Ooh, agriculture would be nice. Um... We're going to lose 0.1 political power, which is fine with me, actually, in exchange for that. That is actually totally okay with me. It is 10.09. Let's get some of this up. Ooh, uh, better guns, better guns, better guns, better guns. Um, let's get this one, because I we got to get better research speed. We have to. The CEI program has been a resounding success so far. All over our country, illiteracy rates are dropping. In this spirit, we've opened our own national college in the industrial city of Squark. Already, many Griffins have applied to join. We've come far. Quite far. Indeed. Nice. So we get 2.03. Great. I want to do that one, but we can wait. Improve machine tools. Nice. Um, grab that one. We definitely could use that one. Make and reform. Support. Support engineering schools. Not bad. Ooh, construction speed and research speed. Agricultural stuff are even better. Consumer goods, though. Uh, support technologies. That's not bad. Military police. Um, honestly, this is like I could just wait on here for a little bit. I like this one, though, but we can't get to that one. Ooh, heavy tanks. Let's do expand northern schools. As part of the CEI, we will open up more schools in order to increase our nation's education and literacy level. The North is a perfect place for these schools, and with many northern na natives lacking the ability to read due to constant warlordism and the legacy of, de uh, of the Duchy of Cloudberry. 
Nice. Alright, so now let's keep going with this way, because we have the bonus for now, which is very nice. Ooh, ship designer, we only have one. Totally fine. We'll get there eventually. Oh, ah, what a research slot. I've got to get that one. We need four research slots. As our education program blossoms, we have seen fit to construct another grand college, the Institute of Applied Sciences in Cloudberry. It'll be our new research and development center, and will greatly increase our research capabilities. And the next thing we're going to do is increase our conscription level, because my gosh, we need political power. Because these guys are going to war with a lot of people, we're going to, be, we have to be ready. We have to be ready for whatever happens. Cloudberry and are nice. Um, these guys we made actually pretty darn nice. I will throw on these guys immediately, just so that when we make 40 combat divisions, we'll be okay. So there you go. And duplicate that and become 40s. I like my boys big. And we have the army XP now to do anyway, so we might as well. Artie and Artie with a lot of thick boys. If they're not thick, we don't want them. You're done after that one. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Because we're only in limited conscription. We gotta go to extensive soon. Check partake union, expand northern schools. Nice, nice, nice. Yes. Illiterate no longer. Oh, look at that. Negligible illiteracy. Right now we are on what? Limited. So we get 5% more construction speed and more research speed. Yes, I've gotta go that way. I've, I've got to, right? We can get rid of this poverty stuff too. Jesus. With the CEI almost finished, every griffin in our great nation will soon be able to read, write, and do simple arithmetic. Our new schools will be able to teach history, science, and war from Cloudberry to Winghagen to a lost gate, and our nation will be a stand as a beacon of knowledge and light in an ever darkening world. We're already halfway through the next focus. Awesome. Not bad. Nova Griffonia stalling grand tensions. What's going on around here? Socialist. Is that supposed to happen in historical? I don't think it's supposed to happen. I don't remember ever seeing this person before, or this griffin, or whatever the person is, or whatever. Bronze Croix? Alright. Well, conscription. The Reich's back is doing well. The Entente's doing okay as well. Intergigantes tripartite. That is something I've never seen before either. Wow. Nice. Get better guns. Get ready for the even better guns. And we're going to need a lot of this stuff too. And a lot of planes as well. Oh, maybe we should make some anti air. That might be really good as well. Alright. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. We're just making a country better and better and better, my friends. Ah, oh, fourth research slots. So good. Ooh, if that's the case, we can go. Gonna, yep, yeah, yep, 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 yep. A thousand times, yep. Illiterate no longer. I want to go down there because right now poverty is not bad, but can, can better our consumer goods and construction speed and research rate and stuff like that. So, um, agricultural mechanization. Through implementing modern mechanization methods in our agriculture, we can drastically increase the efficiency of our farmers, thus allowing for better and greater harvest and our larger food supply. We're going to need as much defense as possible. Oh, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't like this. We have quite a few divisions, which is really nice, but still, these guys ain't too good. And we haven't made any other ships yet either. Um, we don't have a lot of fuel either. God. I just hope our guys are ready to go. Like when the war breaks out. Oh, goodness. A self sufficient economy would be really nice. Ooh, civvies, millies. We go do that one next. I know I've completely ignored this side as well, but, you know, parliamentary elections, we'll do that one probably as a last thing we do, but a self-sufficient economy. Our nation's citizens should no longer be in poverty due to the issues of the former Duchy of Cloudberry. We must be self-sufficient, unlike the previous Duchy, and farm, mine, and work for ourselves. Oh, we get stuff down here, resources? Oh, that'd be nice. Live long and prosper. Uh, Alferstanden Ausrunen. Not bad. The Aquilians march. The, ooh. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad they're marching. And got a few days left for this. Nice. And we're still mobilizing, right? Good. Oh my gosh, we're approaching the border. I'm getting quite worried now. Oh, it's not good, not good, not good, not good, not good, not good. Um, anyone for defense? I mean, technically, yes, down there. How about over here? Defense plus 10% is good. Oh, more attack. And morale. We got Junior there. Okay, so we're just going to go and go with this one. Both Sivat, just in case. A self sufficient economy, and we will conclude this episode with what? This one! Down here. Parliamentary elections. It is time to hold regional elections to have the people decide on who should lead the administrative businesses in their states. The people should govern themselves again and the suspension of 986 shall be rectified. But if you enjoyed our first episode, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we will begin uh, a fight against these northern peoples. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.